Welcome back to Fusion 360 for Woodworkers. We're continuing our build out of the bookcase and today I want to turn our attention to the joint command. That sounds good? Stick around. Even when you're 3D modeling and you're not yet in the real world, sometimes it's good to glue things together. And that's exactly what the joint command does. So let's crack into the diagram and look at the joint command and why I may want to use it. Your joint command is going to be found up here underneath assemble. And you can see you've got two types of joint command. You've got a joint command and an as built joint command. Now they actually do a very similar sort of thing. The as built joint command is used when you want to glue things together that are already in the right position. So for example, all these shelves and all these side panels and all this joinery are in the right position because of the way we constructed this, we designed it in 3D space as we would inside the workshop. So we made the base panel, the side panels, and everything is in the right position. So if you wanted to glue this together, that's exactly what you would do. You just glue it in position. The second joint command, the just the plain joint command, that still allows you to glue things together, but it moves things into their final position. So you could construct over here on this side of your diagram a drawer, and then you'd want to bring your final drawer into the hole. That's what joint would do. It would glue it together and then move it to its final position. As built joint, it's already in the right position, you just need to glue it together. Now, why, you ask, do you want to glue things together? Now, although this looks pretty good, if you were to just highlight any one of these components, this side panel, and just left click, look, you can drag it, and your bookcase would come apart because there's no glue inside it. So everything here is not really what it needs to be. Now Fusion remembers where it is and it's got this thing called position here and if you do the down arrow I can either catch a position i.e. where I've just moved everything to or I can revert it i.e. send it back to the position that Fusion knows. Now for this sort of model you probably don't even care whether this is glued together or not inside your world. There may come a time where you want to sit down with customers and say Look, all these are fixed, but this drawer can come in and out. Now, if we look at that drawer at the moment, and I was to drag my drawer, oh look, my drawer comes apart as well. And that's probably not what you really want to say to a customer. So wouldn't it be cool if I can glue these parts together so it always looks and feels like a drawer? That's exactly what the first function of the joint command does. I'm gonna come back up to position, and I'm going to revert to put my drawer back together and back in the right place. So let's now first of all look at the joint command that we're going to use to glue the drawer together. I'm going to come over here, small drawer left, I'm going to right click and I'm going to isolate it so I've only got the drawer. Now we know the drawer is made up of a couple of side panels, front panel, back panel and a base panel. But we also know that we've built this to be in exactly the right position inside the drawer unit. So I don't need to move it, I just want to glue it. So assemble, as built joint. Now the as built joint will glue things together, but it's already in the right position. The joint command, plain joint command, will glue things together and bring them into the right position. So if I created my drawer in that sort of way, and now I wanted to assemble this, the joint command will allow me to bring that together into the right position. Position, revert, but because we built it in this construct, we don't need to do that. So for this activity, we'll just use the assemble as built joint. Positions components relative to one another and defines a relative motion. We'll come back and look at relative motion in a second and we're focusing now on relative to one another. So let's collect the command. This is your as built joint menu. And you can see you select the components you want to join. That sounds pretty easy. But you've got this thing called motion. And come to the down menu. You've got a rigid motion, a revolute motion, a slider motion, a cylindrical motion, a pin slot motion, a planar motion, and a ball motion. 
Now this all sits in with that relative motion. And we'll come back and talk about these in a second. But the one I want to focus on is rigid, i.e. there's no motion. It removes all degrees of freedom and just locks them together. So we're gonna create a rigid joint. And to be honest with you, when you're just gluing two things together, this is the one you're going to use the most. So, dead easy to use, select the component. Let's glue this front panel to this side panel. Select the front panel, select the side panel. What's the animation? Blah. So that shapes quite happily. And it now gives you this sign here, which is the same symbol as rigid. So these two panels now have a rigid joint together. Okay, now what that means is, if I just grab one of those panels, look at that, they're glued together. These are all still separate, but this front one is glued together. Position, revert to bring them back. So now let's work around the draw. I want to glue this side panel to this back panel. Assemble, as built joint, it's in the right position. I want a rigid joint and I want the side panel and the back panel. Look for your animation and it's a rigid joint. Okay. Right click, repeat as built joint, the back panel to that side panel. Okay. Right click, repeat as built joint, side panel to front panel. Okay. Right click, repeat as joint, base panel to front panel. Okay. Now this is a complete unit and my drawer is all um, glued together. So I'll come back to the left hand side, right click and unisolate to bring the bookcase back. So now you can see, hey Mr. Customer, look, this can slide in and out. This is a drawer assembly and look at these beautiful dovetails. And you can quickly bring it out to show the person and you can put it back in. But the problem you've now got is lining it back up into that space, that drawer opening. And that's quite messy and complicated to actually do. So yeah, you might want to pull it out to show the dovetail joinery, then slide it back in. But wouldn't it be good if that actually slid in and out like a drawer would in the real world? Position, revert, put that back into place. Well, we can do that. Now the joint command will do that for us as well. So assemble as built joint. Positions components are relative to one another. Well, that's what we've just done, but also defines the relative motion. The relative motion of the drawer is sliding in and out. So we want to work out how to do that. Now, nothing in this bookcase is glued together. So although everything is referenced from the origin that we started, nothing is actually glued together and to be honest with you if you're not going to do something like move a drawer in and out you don't need to glue things together what you can do if you want to for completeness but what i do care about is what's the ground position on this bookcase At the moment fusion doesn't know whether i'm going to sit it on its top or lie it on its side or put it on its base we do because we built it in that way so we know that this base panel is going to be the thing that the bookcase sits on that sits in my workshop on top of a sysport design, but basically it's sitting on this base panel. So I want to tell Fusion that this base panel is what we call ground. That's the thing that everything sits on top of. And once we do that, now watch first of all, I can slide this base panel around just by dragging it, position, revert. I want that to be fixed in, in space. Come to the side, highlight your base panel and right click. And at the very top of our menu, you've got this thing called ground. And I'm gonna click that, ground. Now you can see I've got a small red thumbtack here. And now if I grab this panel, I can't move it. That is now fixed. That's the ground point that everything sits on inside our design. So I can now define my draw movement relative to that fixed panel. Assemble, as built joint, because it's in the right position. And now I'm focusing in to one another and defines the relative motion. So as built joint, same menu comes in. But now what type of motion do you want? A revolute motion, a component will rotate around a joint origin, i.e. the center of the component will spin around. Well, I don't really want a spinning draw, so that's not good to me. A slider motion, a component moves along a single axis. Well, that's good, a single axis will open and close. Cylindrical components around and moves along a single axis. So that would slide back into and rotate. Okay. 
a pin slot. That component rotates around one axis and moves along a different axis. Cool, so I could like to move this up and down but rotate at the same time across different axes. Planar components move along two axes and rotate around a single axis. But I don't want any rotation in my draw. And ball, a component rotates around all three axes using a gimbal system, which is like a ball joint, if you're not familiar with that. You see them in the, uh, the swivel top of tripods, for example. So slider looks good to me. Perfect. So we're going to go for a slider motion type. Now, what components are I to slide? Well, it doesn't really matter on the draw. But let's say, let's choose this front component and this base component. Now, what axis do you want to slide across? Now, you can see, if you can use a bit of help, and you can see my cursor, it's beginning to give me these little arrows. So I want this to slide in and out. So I just select the appropriate axis. And I'm going to come down to this corner here. I'm just going to move my cursor around so I get the arrow pointing forward there, like that, okay. And you can see that sliding back and two, and it's sliding along the Z axis, which is pretty much what we want for our draw. You can see I've got this animate button here, which allows me to see the motion, which is great before I commit myself, but well, that looks good to me. Um, slide, I can change, so I could say, actually, I want you across the X axis, so you can go up and down, like in guillotine. I've got the Y axis, so I can go left to right, which is pretty beautiful. Or I've got the Z axis, which is the one that we want. Then just OK that and let it do its thinking. And there we go. So now when I grab my draw, it will only slide backwards and forwards. So hey, Mr. Customer, I've got this draw here. And as you can see, I've got these front dovetails on it here. And I've got these rear dovetails. And it's really pretty. And that slides in and out. So now you can see I've got my draw unit defined there, all glued together and all constrained using those joints. So go and have a play with joints, get your head around it, try the different type of joints, join your draw together, play around with it in space, move it about, but then have a play with those motion commands. It can be a bit tricky to click the right components, but practice and practice till you get it moving in and out in the way we've done here. In the next episode, we'll have a look at the just the plain joint command because I'm going to use that to build the large draw unit by reusing components we've already made on the small draw. We'll see you next time.